Someone asked me once, how do you hear God speak? And I kind of was in a strange frame of mind, I guess, and I said, well, if the shoe fits, wear it. I mean, it's not rocket science. It doesn't take a genius to figure out God speaking to you or directing your life. First of all, knowing the scriptures, which is the Bible, you know, we have the Word of God, you read it. You learn how God operates, the way He operates, what He says He means, He means what He says. I mean, that's obvious. He's not trying to confuse, abuse, or, you know, use a ruse in order to lead someone, but rather He's trying to tell directly people what to do, and they don't do it, so then He works on them. So, sometimes people get into this circumstantial God that is kind of interesting, but you could hear God speak directly, verbally, audibly, really, if you choose to. If not, then a lot of circumstantial ways that God works and moves in a person's life works for them up to a point. But at some point in time, you need to verify and validate that you have a relationship with God in a personal, intimate way, and that He's working through His Word. One of those ways that we do that is through devotionals, like daily life. The reason why I say daily light is because daily light uses only the Scripture, and it's kind of like a nice thing to have because it's kind of like topical and it gives you some insight. But one way God speaks in daily light is to put it bluntly, if the shoe fits, wear it. Now let me go see what the date is because I've already forgotten now that I started talking. So you hold that thought. Don't go anywhere. I'm just checking my computer. based upon my poor eyesight, because I didn't take my glasses, it's the 21st. Now, if it's not the 21st, it doesn't matter, because for the sake of God inspiring us, we're going to read and see that he'll use whatever it was that I, in my life circumstances, have found today to be the 21st. In your day, in your being, in your way, God may use some other day. But let's just open up the Word of God, or in this case, daily life, and see what he has to say for the 21st. And the point is, is that it's not so much the number of the date, but the circumstances of his making it fit. You see, it doesn't matter what shoe you have, what matters is whether it fits or not. You could go out and buy yourself nice Nikes, and guess what? They may be Air Jordans, but if they don't fit, they don't do you any good. I am the Lord which sanctifies you. Ooh, boy, does that fit or what? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, you kind of go, okay, now we know who's talking, and we're listening, aren't we? I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. And you shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. I don't want to get into, you know, kind of like too much of an obvious thing here, but isn't that a little obvious, the shoe fits? Isn't it sound like maybe today me not knowing or planning this out, God decided to tell you how He speaks. God decided to tell you what He's trying to speak to you about. He has separated you from other people and wants you to know Him in a personal intimate way. Bottom line is, guess what? You're hearing God speak, aren't you? And you know He is. You have no doubt. Because God's not making it questionable, but very clear. Sanctified by God the Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of all good works. Both he that sanctifieth and them who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. 
For their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Through sanctification of the Spirit and unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I read that and I go, wow, God, man. Whew. Rush right in with your spirit and speak again in the words that we want to hear. You know, he, he mentions about how he wasn't ashamed to call them his own. He says, in another place, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. I, I can't help but think, you know, obviously, today, because you just read it and heard it, that God was talking to you, wasn't he? That in your circumstances, in your particular life today, where you're at, how you're at, God is speaking to you. And he's telling you something he wants to say. Not what you want to hear necessarily, but what he wants to say. And you see, sometimes that's the problem with people listening with their fingers in their ears. They're not listening to what God says. They want to hear what they have asked him about. They want to know what they want God to speak, not what God is telling them. One of the things I've learned about my relationship with God, my father, is that I may have lots of pressing issues or things on my mind that I want to talk to God about. I will discuss them with him. I may never get the direct answer from what I'm asking, but somehow he's always answered me in direct ways, obviously the things he wanted to tell me, and they accomplished the answer for what I wanted. Sometimes very quickly, sometimes directly with what he said, sometimes in time. I've never doubted that, and I've always watched it fulfilled, and as I began to see it happen more and more often, I began to realize Everybody ought to know that Jesus is alive. A, that's one. B, yes, God is alive, he's not dead. You know, living inside, whatever. But C, God speaks direct. God does want to instruct and direct your life for you, with you, and about you so that you would not be led into some way that you know, all those people that are worried about, you know, protection get themselves into trouble because they step outside of God's protection. Or that in some way you've gone off to the left where, you know, it's like, hey, you suffer what you sow, so guess what? If you walk into a pit, you fall down. <laughs> That's the way it goes, you know, so you shouldn't have been walking in the pit in the first place. But rather, he wants to lead you in the way you should go. Because when he does, there's no doubt about what his purpose is. The question is, when you get yourself into trouble, when you get yourself in some fix, who took you there? Was it God? Or did you do it? And that's the reason why we all at Vidivo, and then every single person that I can possibly share with, I say, look, I don't care what God tells you. I just care that you do, or you know that you can do, what he has told you to do. After that, it's up to you. It's between you and him. It's not about tearing apart the scriptures and chewing on them and you know trying to gurgitate and throw up and make into something you know some doctrine or dogma or some way of man that you can figure out and pragmatically make into a a dissertation so that you can come up with a a uh, hermeneutic and a homiletic so that you're correct according to the biblical standards that man has set for the fundamental elements of Christianity according to their understanding and not God's? Well, me, no, I don't care what they have to say. I care only one thing. What did God tell you? What did Jesus say to you? How has he spoken to you today? And are you doing it? You see, if you're not doing it, at least be honest and say, hey, you know, yeah, God speaks, but I just don't do it. And like, okay, I'm, I'm all for that. I've been there. I know God can tell Jonah what to do. And Jonah says, uh-uh, I ain't going there. <laughs> and eventually he does. Same with you. God will speak to you. Eventually you'll get on with the program and figure out, no matter whether you agree with him or not, you're going to accomplish his purpose. And that's the point that makes him God and you not. 
he always accomplishes his purpose with you or without you because you will either be his blessing or his curse you'll be a vessel of honor or a vessel of wrath the reality of knowing that God speaks gives us great assurance and comfort because then we can trust in him with all our heart we can lean not in our own understanding which we know is really screwed up because we've been all programmed by the world and then we get reprogrammed into what we think we know until we finally figure out we don't know anything at all that if any man knows anything he knows nothing at all then we finally get to the place where we can trust him because he knows it all so you get information direction instruction guidance and comfort from him not from everyone else around you because they're not going to stand there before God on judgment day but God is and he's going to be with you because he's in you today because he's speaking to you today because you know you can hear his voice because today you've proven you've proven that God will talk to you